Marion Robert Morrison, known professionally as John Wayne and nicknamed Duke, was an American actor who became a popular icon through his starring roles in films made during Hollywood's golden age, especially in Western and war movies. John Wayne received his first leading film role in The Big Trail in 1930. Working with John Ford, he got his next big break in Stagecoach in 1939. His career as an actor took another leap forward when he worked with director Howard Hawks in Red River in 1948. Wayne won his first Academy Award in 1969 for his role in True Grit. John Wayne was born on May the 26th, 1907 in Winterset, Iowa. One of the most popular film actors of the 20th century, Wayne remains an American film icon to this day. The oldest of two children, born to Clyde and Mary Morrison, Wayne moved to Lancaster, California around the age of seven. The family moved again a few years later after Clyde failed in his attempt to become a farmer. Settling in Glendale, California, Wayne received his distinctive nickname Duke while living there. He had a dog by that name and he spent so much time with his pet that the pair became known as Little Duke and Big Duke. In high school, Wayne excelled in his classes and in many different activities, including student government and football. He also participated in numerous student theatrical productions. Winning a football scholarship to the University of Southern California, Wayne started college in the fall of 1925. He joined the Sigma Chi fraternity and continued to be a strong student. Unfortunately, after two years, an injury took him off the football field and ended his scholarship. While in college, Wayne had done some work as a film extra, appearing as a football player in Brown of Harvard in 1926 and Dropkick in 1927. Out of school, Wayne worked as an extra and a prop man in the film industry. He first met director John Ford while working as an extra on Mother Macri in 1928. With The Big Trail in 1930, Wayne received his first leading role thanks to director Raoul Walsh. Walsh is often credited with helping him create his now legendary screen name, John Wayne. Unfortunately though, the western was a box office dud. For nearly a decade, Wayne toiled in numerous B-movies, mostly westerns for different studios. He even played a singing cowboy named Sandy Saunders among his many roles. During this time, however, Wayne started developing his man of action persona, which would serve as the basis of many popular characters later on. Working with Ford, he got his next big break in Stagecoach in 1939. Wayne portrayed the Ringo Kid, an escaped outlaw who joins an unusual assortment of characters on a dangerous journey through frontier lands. During the trip, the kid falls for a dancehall prostitute named Dallas, played by Claire Trevor. The film was well received by moviegoers and critics alike and earned seven Academy Award nominations, including one for Ford's direction. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. In the end, it took home the awards for music and for actor in a supporting role for Thomas Mitchell. Reunited with Ford and Mitchell, Wayne stepped away from his usual Western roles to become a Swedish seaman in The Long Voyage Home in 1940. The film was adapted from a play by Eugene O'Neill and follows the crew of a steamer ship as they move a shipment of explosives. Along with many positive reviews, the movie earned several Academy Award nominations. Around this time, Wayne made the first of several movies with German actress and famous sex symbol Marlena Dietrich. The two appeared together in Seven Sinners in 1940, with Wayne playing a naval officer and Dietrich playing a woman who sets out to seduce him. Off screen, they became romantically involved, though Wayne was married at the time. There had been rumors about Wayne having other affairs, but nothing as substantial as his connection to Dietrich. Even after their physical relationship ended, the pair remained good friends and co-starred in two more films, 
Pittsburgh in 1942, and the Spoilers also in 1942. Wayne started working behind the scenes as a producer in the late 1940s. The first film he produced was Angel and the Bad Man in 1947. Over the years, he operated several different production companies, including John Wayne Productions, Wayne Fellows Productions, and Bat Jack Productions. Wayne's career as an actor took another leap forward when he worked with director Howard Hawks in Red River in 1948. The Western drama provided Wayne with an opportunity to show his talents as an actor and not just an action hero. Playing the conflicted cattleman Tom Dunson, he took on a darker sort of character. He deftly handled his character's slow collapse and difficult relationship with his adopted son, played by Montgomery Clift. Also around this time, Wayne received praise for his work in Ford's Fort Apache in 1948 with Henry Fonda and Shirley Temple. Taking on a war drama, Wayne gave a strong performance in Sands of Iwo Jima in 1949, which garnered him his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. He also appeared in two more westerns by Ford, now considered classics. She wore a yellow ribbon in 1949 and Rio Grande in 1950 with Maureen O'Hara. Wayne worked with O'Hara on several films, perhaps most noticeably The Quiet Man in 1952. Playing an American boxer with a bad reputation, his character moved to Ireland where he fell in love with a local woman played by O'Hara. This film is considered Wayne's most convincing leading romantic role by many critics. A well-known conservative and anti-communist, Wayne merged his personal beliefs and his professional life in 1952's Big Jim McLean. He played an investigator working for the US House Un-American Activities Committee, which worked to root out communists in all aspects of public life. Off-screen, Wayne played a leading role in the Motion Picture Alliance for the preservation of American ideals and even served as its president for a time. The organization was a group of conservatives who wanted to stop communists from working in the film industry, and other members included Gary Cooper and Ronald Reagan. In 1956, Wayne starred in another Ford Western, The Searchers, and again showed some dramatic range as the morally questionable Civil War veteran Ethan Edwards. He soon after reteamed with Howard Hawks for Rio Bravo in 1959. Playing a local sheriff, Wayne's character must face off against a powerful rancher and his henchmen who want to free his jailed brother. The unusual cast included Dean Martin and Angie Dickinson. Wayne made his directorial debut with The Alamo in 1960. Starring in the film as Davy Crockett, he received decidedly mixed reviews from both his on- and off-screen efforts. Wayne received a much warmer reception for The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance in 1962 with Jimmy Stewart and Lee Marvin and directed by Ford. Some other notable films from this period include The Longest Day in 1962 and How the West Was Won also in 1962. Continuing to work steadily, Wayne refused to even let illness slow him down. He successfully battled lung cancer in 1964. To defeat the disease, Wayne had to have a lung and several ribs removed. In the latter part of the 1960s, Wayne had some great successes and failures. He co-starred with Robert Mitchum and El Dorado in 1967, which was well received. The next year, Wayne again mixed the professional and the political with the pro-Vietnam War film The Green Berets in 1968. He directed, produced and starred in the film, which was derided by critics for being heavy-handed and cliched. Viewed by many as a piece of propaganda, the film still did well at the box office. Around this time, Wayne continued to espouse his conservative political views. He supported friend Reagan in his 1966 bid for Governor of California, as well as his 1970 re-election effort. In 1976, Wayne recorded radio advertisements for Reagan's first attempt to become the Republican presidential candidate. 
Wayne won his first Academy Award for Best Actor for True Grit in 1969. An eye-patching drunkard and lawman who helps a young woman named Matty, played by Kim Darby, to track down her father's killer. A young Glenn Campbell joined the pair on their mission. Rounding out the cast, Robert Duvall and Dennis Hopper were among the bad guys the trio had to defeat. A later sequel with Catherine Hepburn, called Rooster Coburn in 1975, failed to attract critical acclaim or much of an audience. Wayne portrayed an aging gunfighter dying of cancer in his final film The Shootist in 1976 with Jimmy Stewart and Lauren Bacall. His character, John Bernard Books, hoped to spend his final days peacefully but got involved in one last gunfight. In 1978, life imitated art with Wayne being diagnosed with stomach cancer. Wayne died on June the 11th, 1979 in Los Angeles, California. He was survived by seven children from two of his three marriages. Shortly before his death, the US Congress approved a Congressional Gold Medal for Wayne. It was given to his family in 1980. In the same month as Wayne's passing, the Orange County Airport was renamed after him. He was later featured on a postage stamp in 1990 and again in 2004, and was inducted into the California Hall of Fame in 2007. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite John Wayne movie that you like the most, or maybe a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.